Hi guys. Have you ever bought books intending to read them, but then you just never got around to it because life is so busy and then those books end up just stacking up and piling up around your space? Or maybe there are unread books on your shelves. Well, if so, you're not alone. Plenty of people buy books with the intention of reading them and then they kind of just sit there in our space. So some people feel quite stressed about seeing those books, while others might find a sense of enjoyment or opportunity in them, or a sense of reward. Like when I finish this big project or get caught up on this or have my next day off, I'm gonna pick up one of those books and there's so many possibilities in there. Well, that kind of exemplifies something called tsundoku, and tsundoku is a Japanese term for buying books with the intention of reading them and then things happen, all kinds of things happen and so they end up piled up and they remain unread books that you'll eventually get to reading later. So when people talk about tsundoku in Japan, it's usually discussed in like a fun and lighthearted way and it's not normally seen as a negative habit but more as like a charming quirk that book enthusiasts can relate to. So in this video, we'll explore tsundoku and its nuances, and I hope that you enjoy. By the way, my name is Mika and I'm a writer, and I also own a small professional home organizing business. And I am currently writing a book series about how to have good vibes in your home, and I'm working on the decluttering book. As I write for the week, I share what I've written on this channel. And this week, I wrote about tsundoku. So to preface, next week's video is going to be about how to declutter your books. And that was my initial intention. I was thinking, you know, this week I'm going to sit down and write about how to declutter your books. And then I thought, you know, before I get into that, tsundoku is something that I feel like everybody should maybe know the perspective of because you know as a professional home organizer when I'm in homes oftentimes if people have books that they haven't read they're not oftentimes actually I'd say a quarter of the time sorry like a quarter of the time ish that I've encountered people feel guilty for not reading their books but life is busy and life happens and so then I talk about the concept of tsundoku, which is like very lighthearted and, you know, just a fun way to view your books of like possibilities and energy sitting on your shelf. And then that guilt alleviates and then we can get on with decluttering without, I guess, getting rid of books that we don't, that we like or that we plan to read just because we haven't read them yet, you know? So anyways, I think this is a fun concept that everybody could know and it's just one perspective of a bunch of different ways you could view your books. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you might know that I'm half Japanese. So I am Japanese and then also American and ethnically I'm half uh, Japanese and then on the American side of Irish and German descent. And then I don't know if I've actually mentioned this though, but I speak both languages natively and I grew up or I spent much of my life between Japan and the US. So between Japan, California, and Hawaii. And so anyways, there was a time in my life where I went to Japanese public elementary school and then a time in my life where I went to like public American school and so both countries are like natively ingrained in me and so I love the concepts like taking Japanese concepts and explaining them in English or vice versa taking English concepts and explaining them in Japanese when I have the opportunity and so this is a fun video for me to make. So let's take the word tsundoku and then just kind of break it down. So tsundoku is kind of a slang word and it originated sometime in the Meiji period and so over a hundred years ago and basically there's 
つんどく。So, つん means to pile up. つむ。I'm gonna take this and つみます。Like, つんでおく。So, つむ is to accumulate or pile up. And then, this character is read, but it's There's a pun on the words. So those are what the two characters mean. But, so it's read tsun n doku. But the pun of the word is tsun, which is to put, to accumulate, tsumu. And then tsun de oku. Tsun de oku. So oku, oitoku is like to leave it. So I accumulate the pile and leave it there, basically. But then the pun on the spelling is the reading. And so basically it's <laughs> the piles of reading accumulate. So it's kind of just like a fun slang word. And so the Meiji era, it marked a time of significant cultural and social change in Japan, including literacy rates going up and the growth of publishing and printing industries. Proliferating, and so that probably likely helped to lead to this term tsundoku, where people started book collecting and then reading habits became more of the like a fun collective hobby. So tsundoku reflects a love for books and a love of collecting them, the fun of the purchased and the fun of having it on your shelf or in your home to be able to read pretty soon and just the opportunity and the joy that it presents. So many book enthusiasts will resonate with the concept because it captures the excitement of discovering new books and adding to one's collection. It can be a source of comfort and inspiration to have a stack of unread books waiting to be explored. Also, like one aspect of multiple aspects about it, the visual presence of books can also create a cozy and inviting atmosphere in one's home or reading space. For some people, Tsundoku is a reminder of the endless possibilities and adventures that books offer, and each unread book represents a potential journey into new ideas and stories and knowledge. So, Tsundoku itself. Is often used jokingly and it's kind of become this popular term amongst book lovers and it's often used in like casual conversations or I guess even social media posts relating to book habits and book collections and it's this relatable term that people use humorously or affectionately to describe their tendency to buy more books than they can immediately read Like, I've never in my life heard Sundoku used in a bad way whatsoever. So, the first time I start, I tried to think before I was making this video, the very first time that I heard the word Sundoku that I remember,、um, I must have heard it before this because I already knew what it was. But I think I was like six, seven, or eight years old, and I was in Japan, and it was. Summer, so it's hot and humid. And upstairs, we had it was like a fairly empty, huge room, really cozy, really inviting.、Um, if you've seen my living space versus storage space video, I talk about it and I even show the floor plan and what the furniture was in that house, one of my childhood homes. But it was a traditionally minimalist Japanese home, so it had the rice paper doors and then it had tatami floor mats. Tatami keeps you. Cool in the winter, or sorry, warm in the winter, cool in the summer. And so I was a kid laying with one of my books, and I was just laying out sprawled on the tatami reading something. And then my uncle came up, and he had a plastic bag in his hand, and there was something in it. And so he opens the rice paper door, and he's like, Mika, you know, I brought you something. And it was two books. Two books to add to my collection. So, wow, when I was a kid, I loved books. I would read all the time. I always had my nose in a book. I wonder if you could relate. <laughs> but,、uh, I mean, I'd go play outside and I'd go play with my friends and everything. But if I was at home, generally, like, and my homework was done, 
book in hand and it just transport me to different worlds and books were my companions and I'm gonna just name a few books if you're watching this and then you know Japanese like anime and manga when I was a kid I collected Chibi Maruko-chan, Sazae-san, Anpan-man, what else? Shonen Ashibe. I don't know, I think those were like my primary. And actually, for the Chibi Maruko-chan books, I wonder if I have, if you can see this. These are actually from when I was a kid and I have it on my desk still, but that's the character. I don't know if you can see her because of the, the ring light. And now that I named some of the Japanese ones that I collected of the cartoons and manga and anime, oh, Sailor Moon was another one. I want to name some, ja some English books that I had collected, also series. I loved those series. I had so many. So I don't know if you guys remember any of this, but Goosebumps. R.L. Stein, Boxcar Children, Sweet Valley Twins, Nancy Drew. I think those are the primary ones that I remember collecting. Oh, I love those books. I would collect them and then try to, they, they were numbered. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was just, it was so lovely. I just, it was such a win to find that number that I was missing to try to complete the series. It was like a challenge. And for every book that I had when I was a kid, I am so sure I read over and over and over these books multiple times. So eventually they did all get read and then they got read multiple times. But up until then, when I was collecting them, it was tsundoku. Like I had maybe 20 books in my book shelf for a bookcase that I'm like, ooh, the, all the possibilities of how much entertainment those are gonna be because I haven't had time to read them yet, but I've been able to collect them. So anyways, the first time that I heard the word sundoku that I remember, my uncle comes upstairs and he has this plastic bag and it's full of these books. Uh, ah, two books. It had two books for my manga series that I was wanting. And I remember specifically, it was the Sazaya-san uh, series. And so he hands me the bag and I'm so delighted. So I'm already rolling around, like reading a book, lying out on the tatami floor. And then he says, here's two more books for your collection. He's like, I know you don't have those to you. And he said, don't worry about like rushing to read them. It's okay if they become like tsundoku for a while. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, how cool. But they're from my uncle and uh, I remember I was just so delighted. And I ran down and I told my grandma, you know, he said it's okay if it becomes tsundoku, but it's not going to be for long because I'm going to read them. And that was the first time I remember hearing tsundoku, but I already must have totally known what it was because to run down and tell my grandma, I just remember she humored me and she's like, oh, these are additions you don't have, are they? What's in them? You know? <laughs> and she was looking through the books with me, but to tell her that uncle said it's okay if these become sundoku for a while, you know, I already knew. But, so I think even at a young age, I guess kids must use sundoku, the word, and it's kind of fun. So there's no shame in like, oh, you know, this was bought for me, but I don't have time to read it right now. Nope, none of that. It's more like, oh, it's my pizza and doku for a while, but I'm gonna get to it and I'm so excited. Then I remember when I was a teenager, my cousin, she collected a lot of books, the series, and the, the cousin in Japan, and then obviously she's using the word sundoku, I guess, but she was saying, uh, I remember I had come back from the US and then I was visiting her. So we're in her room and then she's just like, Mika, these have all become like tsundoku on the top row. She's just like, I've collected so many. And my cousin, such a good hearted person, lovely, lovely person. With, I have so many good memories with her. Um, surely she eventually read it, but just the way she said it, it was just this happiness of, wow, all the wonder on the top shelf that I'm eventually going to get to read, but I've collected them for now. I can enjoy looking at them and 
you know, one day I'm gonna get to them type of feeling. And it's this unspoken thing that it's not wasteful at all because, you know, all there is the intention of reading them. Even if it wasn't, that's a whole nother story, but the books are art, so I don't think it's wasteful, but that's just my personal opinion. If you appreciate them and they bring you joy and you have the space for them, I feel like books are such a work of art in themselves. So anyways, but with Sundoku, there is the intent to read them. Then I remember when I was in my early 20s, I worked at Japan Airlines as a translator. So I love this because it was again like taking, you know, the US market and the Japanese market and then translating and kind of taking one side's idea and presenting it to the other side in a way that they could understand. So initially they hired me as an aircraft parts buyer and I was just not good at that. That was not my forte. I was just surrounded by a bunch of files at a desk and I'm just not that happy, not that efficient. I think I'm more gregarious and I like being around people and I like kind of problem solving. It just wasn't my forte. So they took me out of that department as a buyer and they put me into sales and then that was when I flourished because that, that was when I was doing the translating and I could help people like communicate with each other and it was like one side of me explaining to the other side of me so and I know them both natively so it was just a lot of fun but anyways I had gotten a bigger apartment I was quite proud of myself it was like my first bigger apartment when I was in my early 20s and so I had a housewarming party and I didn't want to leave out anybody so I invited the entire floor of our office and it was a pretty big office so I didn't think maybe five, ten people would show up, I would have been happy with like five. Well, so much of the floor showed up and it was so cool because it was the Japan Airlines Logistics Department and the president who was the, the corner office on our floor, like I never would have thought he'd come, but he came. And I mean, just so many people showed up and it was so much fun. It was like by far the best housewarming party I've ever had. It was pretty much my whole office just there to support and it was just fun. But I remember the president of the logistics department and I was so in awe. I'm like, oh, cause uh, I liked his management style. I just thought he was a really good boss. And then he was my boss's boss. My boss was also there and just very humble. But anyways, he walked over to my bookcase and he said, oh, Mika-chan, like little Mika, like he says, are, have you read all these books? Or he's like, are some of them, is it Sundoku? <laughs> and I was just like, no, I mean, part of it Sundoku, probably like 30% is. I remember telling him, I said, the rest I've read. And he's like, okay, cool, that's awesome. I mean, he didn't say awesome, but something along those lines. But that's how it's used in conversation. My friend was joking the other day and he said, I want to buy this book. You know, I've heard a lot about it but it's probably gonna be Tsundoku for now, but I'm gonna order it, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just this inside joke of camaraderie because book collectors and avid readers, all of us at some point buy books and then just don't have time to read them, but then appreciate them and look forward to reading them. And that's a lot of what Tsundoku is. Tsundoku reflects a genuine interest in books and reading where individuals acquire the books because they're genuinely interested in topics and genres or authors and they look forward into delving into those books when the time is right. It's kind of a bit about maybe building like a little bit of a personal library that represents one's aspirations and interests and curiosities and yeah just like a collection of your intellectual curiosities in a way. So another thing related to Tsundoku is the spine and the energetic imprint of the book. So the spine, hmm. In my old apartment, I could always see the bookshelf that I had because I lived in a studio before and 
so I could always see my books right in the middle of the book so from wherever you were in the room you could just see that shelf but in the middle of my shelf I had a big book and it said in red Ernest Hemingway down the middle that book inspired me so much because when I would look at it I'm like oh Ernest Hemingway you know what I like about Ernest Hemingway is that he says to write little like you know as the bare minimum that you can and then so like essentialism in a way and then also to write the truth you have to be honest with yourself and the reader and that that's what I think of when I see his name so it helps me to keep true to my writing and keep it honed down and like kind of minimal if possible still it ends up that nah. Anyways, <laughs> so, but that's the spine. And say, like if you have a spine that says, think happy, or simplicity, and or synchronicity, and then you put it right in front of you, that those words send a subconscious message to you. And tsundoku, like the concept of tsundoku, that's really recognized, because if you take a book, I'm gonna take, say this book, okay? And then if I read the back cover, then, you know, I'm gonna learn something about this book on the back cover. And then, I'm trying to think of what's a good example of a book that I have. Let me get a book. Here's a book I had off to the side, and it's a book by Carl Sagan, the astronomer. And I really like Carl Sagan because I think he was so humane in his thoughts. And he wrote a poem called Pale Blue Dot. And if you haven't heard it, then, you know, if you Google it or look for a YouTube video, it's such a beautiful poem. But it talks about this vision of a pale blue dot. It's a of an actual picture that he's referencing and it's the earth from far away and he says all of the fighting and things that take the power plays and that take place there but also every like woman and daughter and husband and and he just goes on about like humanity and nobody's gonna come save us from ourselves. So it's just like this very deep poem about how humanity we, we fight and we kill each other and it's about power but then there's also so much love and and it's just a really beautiful poem but nobody's gonna save us from ourselves so we need to like shape up right now all the stuff that takes place on this pale blue dot anyways so when I think of Carl Sagan I totally think of that poem pale blue dot but anyways so this book if I was, it's called The Cosmic Connection, if I was to keep this on my desk, I would be inspired. It's kind of whatever mentally I associate with the author or the book. When I come out with the book series, I've been working so hard on the spine, and for now just the spine, but I wanted to make this beautiful series. So when the first book comes out about decluttering and then the second one about like cleaning hacks and the third one about plants and so forth and then self care, I could, you know, wh whoever buys the book and also me <laughs> on my shelf, I want it to be like really beautiful. So each one goes together and it's like a series, but I've been putting a ton of effort and ideas and thinking into the spine. So anyways, I hope that when somebody collects or buys or has my books, I wish for them to feel good and have that feeling of simplicity, but something that's inspiring for them when they look at the spine. So also here's the thing. The essence of the books with Tsundoku, the energy of that the books go into the room in a sense. And bear with me here because you might be like, what? <laughs> but here's an example. I think books have a very strong energy to them. 
and Sundoku also. So, mm -hmm. if you have a room full of books and all those books are on murders and serial killers, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to have a very different feel from a room that is about happiness and peace and joy. So, say if say if all the books around me in, behind me are about murders, then I feel like this room would feel a little bit different. And then if they were all about peace and joy, probably feel different. But basically it's believed that books emanate a certain energy. So if you have books by, um, I'm just going to throw some names out there, but Warren Buffett, Carl Sagan, Marcus Aurelius, like meditation, say you have um, books that are from people who are very knowledgeable, who have educated themselves, who have worked hard, and then who have put their thoughts into books, then you're going to have like a, the energy of wisdom in your home. And Japanese in general are very nuanced on energy, and so it's kind of just an unspoken thing that with Tsundoku, that energetically the books are going to have some resonance with you and then also impact the feel of the room but also in a practical sense too so if i want to know about carl sagan and astronomy and the humanity type of side of astronomy which i feel like he excels in then say if i have this book say if i want to flip open the page and kind of just you know maybe i'm bored and so if i have it in my possession i'm very likely to flip through it you know, if this had words on the back, I'd probably read through it and take a gander at what it's saying. And in the process, you know, I learn things. And so there's a very practical aspect of it too. Also, maybe one day I feel inspired to learn more about astronomy. I already have the book. And so that's kind of the aspect of Tsundoku is there's like a element of the energy kind of being affected in the room. So if you have, if you fill a room and surround yourself with books on knowledge, they say some knowledge will be imparted into you too. Like just, I guess in a pragmatic sense where you might flip through the book, but also just by the energy and the resonance of the book in the room. So in the West, there may not be the exact equivalent term, but the behavior of collecting books with the intention of reading them or and then having like a stack of unread books is common and totally relatable, I think. I think we do the same exact thing here, but we just don't have the word for it. And you know, because I've seen, I've been in a lot of homes because I'm a professional organizer and in Western cultures, like I feel like, well, West and East, right? Like, so I guess the whole world but uh but in the west i say there's no word for tsundoku but people cherish their home libraries and they enjoy browsing bookstores and they appreciate the presence of books in their living spaces many individuals have personal collections of books that they haven't read yet but plan to read in the future and i feel like this practice reflects a similar viewpoint to tsundoku where the act of owning and accumulating books is valued even if they're not read immediately and it's kind of like the sentiment of enjoying book collecting and buying books and valuing the presence of books and finding joy in the potential of unread books and i feel like this is definitely shared by book lovers globally so is there a dark side to tsundoku though? I think there is. Is It's when we collect too much for the space that we have. And then also when we feel pressure to read them, like feel guilt or pressure. Some people do feel guilt and pressure. Some people don't. Some people just see it as like excitement and possibility. But also past a certain saturation point, you might have once thought of it as like possibilities and fun 
But then some people, you know, it might start to weigh on you. And I think that's when Sundoku can get a little bit dark. And especially if you have more books than the space can comfortably hold, that's when it's time to reassess. What are my reading habits? How can I incorporate more reading? Should I declutter books? Should I stop buying books? But so I think there is a little bit of a dark side to Sundoku. And so with that, I'm just going to segue into next week's video. It's going to be about how to declutter your books. And then, but in this one, I just really wanted to share with you Tsundoku. So that's it for Tsundoku. But before you leave, I just want, if you're interested, I thought I'd wait till the end instead of putting this at the beginning. But I was watching some home movies a few weeks ago. And I just want to show you a really cool clip if you have any interest. Since I've been an adult, I haven't watched any of my home movies. And then I met up with my dad and I just thought it'd be fun. So we watched a few home movies and what I thought was so cool is before vlogging was even a thing, this is in the late 80s, my mom was vlogging. <laughs> so basically when I was born, my dad bought this video camera and it, he said it was like top of the line at the time and my parents would film videos for my grandparents in Japan just so that they can see what life was like in like the late 1980s in the Bay Area of California for them and then we'd take the VHS's to Japan and this is an excerpt from the first tape that we watched.
Weren't the cars so cool? It's like traveling back in time. Well, I guess, yeah, it was the late 80s, but it looks so different. The cars on the freeway and everything, I thought that was pretty cool. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm gonna eventually do a video about sentimental clutter and how to go through it. So I'll probably show you some more clips then, but um, that's it for this video. Next week is how to declutter books. And I just wanted to share with you Tsunzoku first. So I hope that you have a good understanding of it. And if you have any questions about it, just leave me comments in the comments below. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And thank you so very much for watching. See you in the next video.